In the last five years, I've gone from writing my first ever line of JavaScript to running my own AWS serverless consultancy and running this YouTube channel, which has now grown to 10,000 subscribers. Before we get into the video, I just wanna say a massive thank you to everyone watching this and everyone that has subscribed for getting this channel to 10K subscribers and beyond. Literally everything covered in this video would not be possible without you guys. As a way of saying thank you, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway of five AWS exam vouchers worth up to $1,500. If you want to be in a chance of winning one of those vouchers, then make sure you stick around till the end of the video as I'll be telling you how you have a chance to enter. My journey to get where I am today has been honestly an amazing experience. In short, I think it comes down to two major things. First is having a really strong driving motivation to get you to do that hard work. The second is I've been lucky. There've been loads of times through the last five years where I've had a lot of luck, which has really impacted how my experience has happened. My first lucky break is the fact that I actually have two driving motivations. The first one is that I really, really enjoy problem solving. My other driving motivation is that I am an obsessed rock climber. Now, you may be wondering, how does rock climbing make you into an AWS and serverless consultant? Well, over this video, I'm gonna show you how that really did make a lot of difference. With my itch for problem solving, plus enjoying big, fast and dangerous things, from a young age, I decided that I wanted to be an aerospace engineer. I went to uni, did aerospace engineering, and ended up getting a job at Rolls-Royce designing jet engines. Whilst Designing jet engines sounds awesome. There was so much red tape and bureaucracy and the process was so slow that I very quickly realized that that wasn't the career for me. This is kind of the first point where climbing really comes into this whole process. Whilst at uni, I'd been on climbing trips and holidays where I'd bumped into software developers who were working remotely and on their days off, they would be able to just walk out to the local climbing area and do that all year round whilst traveling to the best climbing areas in the world. For me, the idea of being able to work where you want to be climbing and do that wherever you want was such an awesome idea that that was a very big driving force for becoming a software developer. Because I wanted to go into software and I wanted to do it as quickly as possible, I basically researched what is the lowest entry job that I can get in software. That turned out to be front-end web development. To learn how to become a front-end developer, I was really lucky and I found the free CodeCamp courses. In my spare time at home, before work, on the train, anytime I had any spare time, I would be on that site trying to upskill myself so that I was ready to get my first job. At work, I was writing simulations, but these simulations often took four hours to run and there'd be 20 of them to run in a big batch. After three or four days of writing documentation and reports, whilst the simulations ran, I started to run out of things to do. So I decided that I was gonna work on the free code camp courses. And here's where I was super lucky again my supervisor either didn't mind too much or just didn't notice. But this gave me a huge block of time that I dedicated to learning web development and completing the free CodeCamp course. After four months of learning in my own time and sometimes at work, I'd actually completed the free CodeCamp front-end curriculum and I'd also been starting to send out job applications. Here is another point where I got really lucky. A little software development company near me decided to take a chance and actually offered me a job. That job was with a small team of devs and I learned loads. I started just as a front-end developer, but that team helped me grow and I started to learn about the back-end, about Node.js. After that job, 
I actually went traveling around Asia for five months. This is something I'd always wanted to do, but this wasn't gonna be the normal gap year kind of time off. Whilst I did spend a lot of it climbing and that was the original motivation, I also had a little goal for myself. I wanted to go on this trip and when I came back, I wanted to be ready to apply for mid-level full stack developer jobs. With this in mind, I set out with a plan. I scoured a lot of job adverts and found out that React was the most popular front-end framework. So that's what I was going to learn. To complete the full stack, I was also going to learn Node, Express, and how to work with Mongo and deploy all of this as the back end. My process for learning each of these blocks was always to follow a course and learn how it all fits together. Then it was to build my own personal projects based off what I'd learned in the course. And then once I was comfortable building with that technology, move on to the next step. I'm gonna put some links in the description below for the courses I used to learn React as well as node and backend development. Whilst traveling, I also wrote my first ever article. It was on the Great Firewall of China, and I got really lucky here because I reached out to Quincy from Free Code Camp, asking for some feedback or advice on how I can write better articles. He not only gave me loads of really good feedback, but also invited me to be one of the writers on the free code camp platform. This was super important for me as it really got me into the content creation aspect of software development. And over the next year or so, I think I wrote something like 50 articles. So an absolute massive shout out to Quincy as yeah, I wouldn't be here today without you. Those five months now became traveling and rock climbing and enjoying the experience. But when there was some free time, also doing some learning or taking a new course, writing a new blog article. Even to this day, I still get emails from people who've read an article I wrote whilst sat on a beach in Thailand. With six weeks before I returned to the UK, I decided that now was the time I needed to start applying for jobs. I don't know how many different jobs I applied for, and some of my interview processes were kind of interesting, including one time where I had a call with a recruiter whilst in the middle of a field in Laos. With just three weeks left before I came back to the UK, I had a series of job interviews lined up and the company that I was most keen on, they gave me a project. The project was to take an e-commerce website that was outdated and improve it and make it better for the client. What I did is every morning before going climbing, I would spend between three and four hours working on this project. I was doing custom front end. I was also building the back end. So a full database of products, as well as checkouts and carts. It came to the last couple of days and they had some like extra bonus tasks. One of the extra tasks was that the company had a customer service department that worked Monday till Friday, nine till five. But most of their support queries came in on the weekend. To solve this, I decided to build a chatbot. I found a course and learned how to use Dialogflow from Google, built a little chatbot that lived both on the website but also on their Facebook page. I didn't know it at the time, but building this chatbot was a massively lucky thing when it came to doing some interviews in the next couple of weeks. When I got back to the UK, I had six interviews in four days with a company that I really, really liked on the last day. One of the other interviews was with a small company called Mission Labs, who were a little bit out of town, and honestly, I only really took that interview so that I could have some extra practice for the big interview on the last day. Little would I know that that would be a really lucky decision to take that interview. When I went and interviewed for Mission Labs, I met one of the founders, David Haig, 
who is absolutely psyched on technology. I went through the normal interview process and they talked about one of the side projects they'd done, which was building a chatbot for one of their international retailers. When they mentioned this, I started grinning because I knew I had my demo project. I then managed to demo the project that I'd been working on with the chatbot. They were really impressed by the chatbot and how it worked. And they asked me how long it took. I told them it took about a week to learn about dialogue flow and to build the chatbot. And they were really surprised. They said that the product they'd built, the chatbot for their retailers, had taken them about six weeks to build. Looking back now, I'm pretty sure they were just being nice, but it was enough to get me a job offer before I'd left the office. But also that offer was at five grand higher than what I had asked for. The next day at the dream company, the interview was honestly really boring. The staff were just not interested in the product and the director seemed to be exhausted and burnt out from trying to manage it all. Obviously, I then took the job at Mission Labs and started working on the chatbot and customer service side project. The biggest shout out I've probably got in this whole video is to Tom. He was an absolutely awesome mentor and he pushed me to learn new things. He invited me into meetings and to take, take responsibility for things that were way beyond what I should have been doing. Because of this, I very quickly went from just being a developer to becoming a solution architect, but also to leading meetings with clients. This meant that at Mission Labs, not only did my technical skills evolve, but also the non-technical stuff around project management, as well as how to interact with clients. One thing about Mission Labs is that they were completely AWS based and the smart agent project that I was working on aimed to be 100% serverless. Obviously, this was all new to me at the time. And as I was learning about AWS and specifically serverless, I found that there weren't that many good resources out there. So with my background writing for free code camp, I decided to start writing some tutorials. After a few of my AWS tutorials started to do well, I decided to make a go of trying to make a video out of them. That is the birth of the Complete Coding YouTube channel. Over the next three years, both myself personally, as a developer, I grew loads, but also the YouTube channel grew to over 4,000 subscribers and a quarter of a million views. I just want to give a massive shout out to anyone who has commented on any of my old videos as I read every single one of them and they are super motivating. Here's a few comments just to shout out. By the time I left Mission Labs, I'd become one of the three lead solution architects. I had my own team and we'd built a chat platform that was handling about 300,000 users a month for multiple international brands. Through this, I even got invited to go to Seattle to meet AWS and get an early access to the Amazon Connect chat platform. One of the side effects of the YouTube channel was that people started reaching out, saying that they'd followed the tutorial and their company was now wanting to do more. Could they hire me? to help them build that. Whilst working at Mission Labs, I'd had a few small freelance gigs. And towards the end, I ended up having one recurring client, which really gave me the motivation to decide to leave Mission Labs and to start my own AWS serverless consultancy. My girlfriend and I had also just bought a van, which we were converting ourselves into a camper so that we could go touring around Europe, going to the best climbing areas possible, and having to work for myself as a consultant would give me that extra level of flexibility around when and who I worked with. Around this same time, my girlfriend and I decided to move to Germany to be closer to her family and also 
to escape Brexit. I got to move into my own office in our flat and started to grow my YouTube channel as well as the consultancy side of things. Very quickly, we managed to land a new big client. And with this client, I actually was able to start hiring other people to work as part of Complete Coding. Over the last year, I've been really focused on both growing the consultancy as well as the YouTube channel. Most recently, I've actually joined up with three other creators from the AWS community developers to create a YouTube mastermind group. You may have noticed that the last couple of videos have different thumbnails and are a little bit more fast paced than my older content. Hopefully this helps accelerate the growth of the Complete Coding channel and basically helps more people learn serverless and get better jobs as serverless engineers and architects. So that is where I am up to now. Over the next year, we're going to be moving into our van and traveling around Europe, but also YouTube is going to become a much bigger focus of my personal time so that we can grow the channel even quicker. If you've liked this video and have enjoyed seeing more of the behind the scenes, then check out my Instagram. I've linked it in the description below and I post more on there around how I'm creating the videos, coming up with ideas, as well as a bit of the consultancy life and most importantly, the van life as well. Now, the reason that most of you are probably here is that to celebrate hitting 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away five AWS certification exams worth up to $1,500. To be in with a chance of winning one of those five AWS certificates, all you need to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, and in the comments below, let me know which is your favorite AWS service. In a week's time, I'm going to go through all of the comments and I'm going to randomly pick out five people. Those people can then select the AWS exam certificate that they want, whether it's an associate, a professional or even a specialist exam. I wish you all good luck and hopefully I'll see you all again in a video similar to this when we hit 100,000 subscribers, hopefully very soon. Thank you all again for supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next AWS and serverless video.